If I hide this top plate, you can see this motor is much larger. And if I go ahead and hide the body, you can see that this is a geared DC motor. And it's larger than the last, now with four mounting holes. So you can see these four holes right here. And I have these four flathead screws. And inside the body is um, where the four holes attach to. So I can just kind of show you a cross section. And I'm going to just pull through the part. And you can see um, that these screws run all the way through. And screws are always a little bit shorter than the length that they tell you. So in reality, this would not uh, really cause any interference. Um, so you can see these couple screws here. Uh, that being said, the casing that holds the motor has been improved uh, dramatically. So I'm going to show you just the tank body alone. And I'm going to tell you about the next steps that need to be made uh, in order for this to work. So here's the tank body. And you can see that there is a cup type thing here. And this holds the DC motor uh, front piece to it. And it also has, of course, the four included holes to mount it. And this uh, thickness here, if I set a measurement here on this line, you're going to see that um, this is 0.16 inches. And if I open the motor on its own, or if I show that to you on its own, you're going to see that the motor has a sort of D shape. And the distance between um, this face and the top of the retaining uh, ring is 0.147. So the fact that it's 0.147, um, that's going to be a good distance for our um, part here, our thickness here. This is 0.16. And so putting that all together, um, if I show this again, you're going to see that that's enough distance for the uh, pin to go into the driving sprocket. So let me show that. I'm going to do a section here and cut downward. And if I cut all the way through everything, you're going to see that our driving axle, our driving pin, goes into the sprocket uh, with a good amount of distance. And we, of course, don't want our chain and our um, whole assembly here to be too close. And so th this is a way to kind of keep it uh, close, but not too close to the body. And so there you have it. I'm going to show orthographic. You can see that there's just a little bit of distance here between the roller chain links and the body. And if I change the distance of the neck of this, then that will change. And so for the next steps, uh, let me exit my analysis here. For the next steps, um, the goal is to add the correct motor controller. So we're going to add a motor controller in here into this sort of circuit that we're building. And we're going to have to mount it down inside here somewhere. And we're also uh, going to have to uh, change our sprocket. If I open up the sprocket on its own, you're going to notice that the hole is just a simple hole. But this needs to have a D-shaped hole because the motor, if you, if you just look at the motor on its own, then you're going to see that it has a special shape on it, on its axle. So you see that? See how there's a, a cut in here? Uh, we need to re-engineer our sprocket uh, for this to fit in. So 
So uh, th those are the next steps. And uh, once we make those changes, then um, we'll be just about ready to start printing. And inside here, we're going to have to uh, get rid of some of these ribs. And I'm planning on rotating the battery case and the uh, pie. That way there's more room in here for a couple other things. But these ribs are very important because they're the strength of the wall. This wall cannot bend. If this wall starts to flex and bend, then this whole mechanism, the suspension mechanism, is going to get out of whack and it's not really going to work well. So um, all these things have to be uh, considered. <laughs> 